<laughs> AJ, this has to be a first, man. We've, I don't think we've ever delayed the show by a few minutes in order to uh, in order to check out a patch about a game that we're about to talk about. I think this this is a first for us, isn't it? Um, well, this is a first for us because this is uh, the situation we've been put in. We we haven't we don't usually get patches uh, like this ten minutes before a show starts. So right. uh, you know, and uh, luckily there there were some changes, but there's still a lot to talk about because it sounds like the majority of uh, what's going on still a lot to address here so i think everyone's been waiting long enough how about you yeah sorry to keep you waiting everybody let's start the show This is PSVR Gamescast Live, where we film live every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6, 5, 17 p.m. Eastern. My name is Brian Paul from this channel right here, PSVR Without Parole. Hey, and if you like this show and you don't want to stare at us for an hour every single time we do it, you can always go over to uh, Spotify or uh, Apple Podcasts, and you can just listen to it all lackadaisically and stuff like with your with your iPod because people still use those, right? That's right. And over here, the guy I couldn't do this show without, AJ from The Underground. PSVR Underground. What is up, Brian? What is up, Game Cats? Oh, you lovely bunch. So many of you here already, man. Thank you guys for, for waiting around so patiently. Um, and the good news is we are going to deliver what we delayed, <laughs> made you delay and wait for, and we're going to deliver. Happy Monday. Happy, you know, I know Mondays usually suck. And we're going to make your Monday suck just a little bit less, despite it possibly sucking a little bit more, <laughs> too. <laughs> Lots of sucking going on today. Get ready. Right, Brian? What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, lots of sucking going on today. Uh, shout out to everybody who's tipped so far. Uh, there were lots of uh, tips before we even got the show started. Thank you, guys. Bell Ramio was it? Who else was it? AJ, you told me. Uh, uh, I think I saw genetic blasphemy. I saw like MRI Gamer. Um, thank you guys so very said, much for for uh, for donating and, and keeping the chat alive while we were uh, testing this out. Uh, Loop of the Underground Game Cat with the five euro says so. This one isn't going to make it to the hopefully upcoming top 10 aim games. Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. There's 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 a big conversation that's going to happen today. I know that all you've heard so far is a lot of negativity, uh, but I think you're going to get a little bit of positivity mixed into the show. Uh, shout out to Bell, obviously, who just donated two euros as well. It says, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Um, hell yeah, man. I'm not sure if you can spoil this so much, but you know. Yeah. Uh, so guys, uh, just real quick housekeeping, make sure that if you're not already part of our Discord community, uh, you click the link in the description below, you join that over there, that's where we hang out 24-7, hang out in voice chat, just shoot the shit, talk all the time, um, and, uh, and so if you're not already there, do it, man. It's a good time. It's free. Yeah, man. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. It helps us a lot. It goes a long way. And, you know, as you can see from earlier today, we're not, uh, we, we don't take endorsements from games. We don't work for Sony or anything. We risk our relationships with them, in fact, to, keep, to, to bring you guys honesty and honest reviews and everything. So, you know, consider uh, going to patreon.com slash without parole and supporting us there as well because we are completely crowdfunded by you guys. So, slash without parole. Thank you. Games. <laughs> this without close. parole games. This close. Uh, Peter, the <laughs> underground game cat on parole. I wish I could roll my R's. $2 tip says, we want nay. We need an AJ rant today. Yeah, oh, I think you might get Oh, you're going to get one. Yep. I'm a. Uh, you're gonna get an AJ rant today. That's for sure. Uh, Niles Ryan, the game feeling with the five dollar tip says, "Here to feed the beast." I love a good train wreck. <laughs> so this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> um, so guys, yeah, obviously, you know, we we usually flood the beginning of these games cast with a bunch of uh, a bunch of smaller news stories, PSVR news stories, things that you think we'd be interested in. I I don't want to keep all you guys waiting. We need to talk about it after the fall, uh, and luckily. Luckily, we were able to play this entire game. So anyone anyone who thinks that I've only played it in single player like I did on my stream this morning, uh, anyone who thinks that I only played it on easy like I did on my stream this morning, we played it all weekend on Quest 2 uh, in four-player multiplayer, and we have full impressions of the game, the way it's Content meant to be played. of the game, yep. yes. And, when uh, it's in working order. Right, absolutely. 
Uh, and then obviously uh, some impressions about what's going on over in PSVR land. Uh, keys were not delivered, still not delivered for the uh, PlayStation VR. Uh, so anyone who says they have any kind of impressions uh, or any review of the game, uh, I, I don't, I don't see that being the case because we just no keys were delivered still to this point. And I, and I think I think now we know the reason, right? This game just this game was in a poor state um, and should not have been played earlier today when it was first available for the Australian uh, gamers to play in 38 minutes, it will be available for anyone who pre-ordered the game period. Right. So I'll show you got a little bit early uh, and, but luckily they just delivered a seven gig patch. Uh, what that's what, that's what I was checking out before the show started. So, right. So um, they did. Yeah. So we're going to break down the contents of the game because there's a lot to review there. And that's going to be a very interesting discussion. I'm sure you guys aren't just interested in the patch itself, uh, not the patch, but the issues with the game. You're interested in the game itself, uh, just as a whole. And the developers did give us an update this morning. I kind of went on a tirade this morning. Uh, shout out to Wild Hour, the game cat, Meryl, uh, one of our Aussie cats there who informed us. He jumped into the game, I guess, and went live in Australia and said, guys, this is a train wreck. And uh, he said, it's really, really bad. And so we immediately purchased this from the uh, Australian store to get the PSVR impressions. And as you could see from the stream earlier, there are some major issues. And then we, uh, we came to find out later that uh, after the fall, developers Vertigo Games actually posted on Twitter a message, a developer update saying, Dear PSVR runners, um, we know some of you who pre-ordered on PSVR are already neck deep in the fight against the snow breed. Unfortunately, we have to warn you that you are currently playing a deprecated PSVR build of the game, which does not include cross-platform multiplayer support, among other things. We urge you to wait for our new patch before continuing your early access to avoid issues. Know that we are extremely disappointed as well, as, and we're doing everything we can with the platform right now to fix this. We acknowledge that this is not what you signed up for, and we will keep you updated on this matter. And uh, the patch, uh, I'm, I'm also talking to some people uh, behind the scenes at Vertigo Games. This patch sounds like it mainly addressed the crossplay. So the crossplay should be activated now. If you check the patch notes, so I did I did check this patch out. That's why we were 15 minutes late. I checked the patch out. Um it crossplay does seem to be active. There were people in the lobby, there of different platforms and the, the, that's that's great news, right? And so that that's a big deal right there. Um the other thing that this seemed to address, which wasn't even listed in the patch notes, is that they finally switched the uh, aim control sticks back. So uh, so now the left one does the left what the left one should do, and the right one should do what the right one should do. So this was it was unplayable uh, on PlayStation VR uh, with the aim controller because of that. It's like you just have to, and, and unless you were you're really good at adapting to a new control scheme uh, on the fly, which I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I I, had, I struggled to get through a level uh, with with those yeah. analog sticks the way they were. That is now addressed, thankfully. Thankfully, that's that's a big deal, man. That's a big deal because at, when we saw the control scheme uh, for all the different controls, we we're like, at least the aim will be playable. You know, we don't have to worry too much right. about the aim. And now the aim is and that wasn't even <laughs> and that was broken this morning. Well, at least it was. They had the sticks swapped. Uh, so you know, it was funny. I saw Mike check Nick Ulo, a bunch of people laughing about it because they're like, now you know how we feel whenever a game releases. I guess left-handed support for the aim controller is just swapping the sticks, and uh, and now apparently they've swapped that back. There is supposed to be an option though that you can go in and swap the sticks for left-handed. I don't know if it works. It didn't work earlier, so I don't actually know if it works for the current version. So I don't know if. Uh, left-handed players are screwed again or if that's going to work but that was a uh, patch now so yeah. you know playable though brian is a strong statement because the the controllers this is the thing is that they're hoping to get we've talked to them about the controllers we had an episode on friday mm -hmm. talking about the issue with the button mapping that we saw and when i played it this morning it was so much worse than what we were expecting you guys yeah it was worse somehow to all those games like immortal legacy uh that that people used to bash the controls this is 
worse. I would have killed for some Immortal control. Legacy controls this morning. I would have whoa, too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That would have been I great. I would have too. Yeah, this is. There's. The, yeah, FYI, the move controls that are the that the control scheme we were talking about on Friday, where the where the turn left button is on the left move controller and the turn right button is on the right move controller, that is still yes. the case even post patch. Uh, so even though they they flipped the switches, they flipped the sticks back on the aim controller, they did not address some of the really weird mapping on the move controllers. So uh, that is. Uh, that is that. Uh, Inside is asking about the motion sickness issue. Uh, You're right, right. Let, let's get to that in just a second. I want to continue on the controllers for a second because here's the thing is they have said, they've told us that there's not going to be a, um, a day one patch. There's not going to be a day one patch for the controllers, but they have taken in all the feedback we've given them. We've told them, you know, play games like Saints and Sinners, Skyrim, uh, you know, kind of thing, the virtual joystick, any game from this year, really, uh, <laughs> had all. they all had the right control scheme, which yeah. is you press the move button and you point it in the direction you'd like to walk. And, um, <laughs> you know, even if you have something more complex like Sirento did, where there's lots of grabbing and, and equipping stuff from around the body, there's doing backflips, they found a solution that was intuitive and worked. This game did not. This game didn't even copy Arizona Sunshine. Arizona Sunshine didn't have great move controls. Most people played it with the aim controller. This was somehow even worse. So needless to say, this is something that is really a weak point for Vertigo Games developing on PSVR. And uh, they didn't do the research and get the feedback that they needed. Didn't have the proper play testing. Um, and so this is why we are where we are right now with the control scheme. Yeah, yeah, this is, I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. In case you're not familiar uh, with what they're doing with the move controls, uh, they, they did kind of do a virtual joystick type thing, meaning you push a button to walk on the left move controller, and then oh, you... God point with the right move controller it's I, I was so confused for so long being like, what in the hell do i do here and so you can actually push the button to move forward or and then strafe left and right uh and then you know and walk backwards but that means whenever you're moving you're pretty much not able to shoot or indefinitely not right. able to do a wheel because you're because your controllers are just facing in all sorts of different directions in order to make you walk in the direction you want to move in. Like that's why there's walk backwards buttons now because people were like, right. oh, I want to be able to walk backwards while dual wielding or while casting magic. You know, it shouldn't be affecting these things. And now to walk backwards, it requires you to push a button on one and point with the other, meaning like good fucking luck doing anything yeah. when you're trying to walk There's backwards or strafe or move or all. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Tip typically the hand that is you're pressing down the button and you're pointing that you that frees up your other hand to be able to aim and shoot. And this one that like the uh, hand with the gun in it is the one that you have to point to move in that direction. So you can't point and shoot you can't uh, walk around in the direction you want to and aim at the same time right. and it is just a oof, a horrible horrible thing to overlook um and it's really surprising that because they posted the they posted that they'll be taking in feedback about the control scheme and again i can't stress this enough why did they do this after launch or at launch after launch like this should have been done before the game comes out. So that <laughs> yeah, there's think? no there's no excuse whatsoever no. when it comes to the control scheme. Tons of other people have done it all year long, no issues. This is that control scheme issue is purely on Vertigo yeah. Games. Yeah, and and sadly the only time I was able to really understand how the weapon wheel and item management worked was with the move controls, which again you still should definitely not be playing with. Trying to get that shit working with the with the dual shock and the aim controller just was an absolute mess. Everything is extremely unintuitive, uh, and that's if it even works. Which again, I, I tried to pick up a, a floppy disk, which you'll understand the reason of later, uh, and tried to put it in my inventory, and just psh, it just kept falling on the floor, falling on the floor, falling on the floor, and then it disappeared. And I had no idea where it went. I wasn't sure if a teammate picked it up or, or what the deal was, but I certainly didn't have it in my inventory. So it's it's still really messy. Time out. Darth Vader, the game cat with a $10 tip says, let's get our hardened hearts. Let's hope our hardened hearts will soften when PSVR 2 gets announced. Fingers crossed for the ninth. Fingers crossed for the ninth. Very, oh, very God, hard. please. Please. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, at this, at this point, it's, I, I really, 
it's bad enough that we have days like this when, when PSVR games launch in a really sorry state, but it's even worse because then, then it's like all of the uh, Quest 2 trolls and all of the PC VR trolls feel as though they have an excuse to come shit on PSVR when it's obviously just right. this game and the, these developers. Right. And not the hardware itself. Like, obviously, like, you know, we're... I it mean, has its limitations, but, but there, yeah, it has its limitations, but they definitely, uh, you know, there is a traditional way of going about things. And, and that's the problem when developers don't get it right, then it, it causes us 10 times the issues because people, it gives people an excuse to go, Oh, PSVR sucks. <laughs> you know, this is what we're talking about. Right. It's like, no, fuck you. Everything was fine until this game had this issue right. so it it really like snowballs on us when we get put in these situations and that's why we get so up in arms and 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 pissed off about it because People now we have fanboys feel... right we're not fanboys man we just love we love our system and and we don't and we don't uh, we don't we don't feel well, the need to engage in this shit the the issues are not you know it's just the issues are a different thing it's on it's on the uh the developers to get this stuff um but anyways yeah. Anyways, let's uh, and, let's go. And trust, um, you know, we'll talk all about the Quest Two version later on in this episode when we right. review the full game. Uh, and, right. uh, and trust me, it's not yeah, all well, fucking sunshine and rainbows over there <laughs> either, folks. Uh, <laughs> Wally and Sarid Faridi with the Canadian two dollar tip says, "Hey guys, as a side note, it's December sixth. Still no PSVR two? <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. Fucking talk We're to waiting. Sony. Tell those motherfuckers yeah. to get on the ball and be Wait, like, everybody, show us that everybody, shit. everybody needs to start mobilizing and start just." We need more people now more than ever to start going online and telling Sony how bad uh, we need PSVR 2 and how bad we want it. So no. anyways, Imzadi <laughs> no, brought up brought up the issue about you feeling motion sickness with the, yeah. with this game. Here's the thing. I don't get motion sickness at all. Neither do you, really. Nope. Um, I felt a little sick earlier. And that's the other thing. That is a huge problem. Besides the control scheme, the performance of the game is not up to par. The like, you know, that's that's the one thing we usually can always count on. Mostly, with some exceptions, is that the game runs smoothly and that it's a comfortable experience. That is something we rarely have to worry about. That's not the case with this. With the the version we played earlier, the NPCs are running at a lower frames per second and the overall visual quality of the game it really wasn't as big of a difference as i was hoping from what i saw here True. we saw the we saw the upload uh comparison video where it had pc ps uh, vr and quest 2 and it looked like it showed like pc and ps vr and they looked like pretty similar and then it showed the quest 2 and then there was like you noticed like the difference but when I was actually in the game today, it was very much like this is like the Quest 2 version with flashlights and like maybe a couple things like um, uh, have a little bit of like um, shine to them, but not as much as I was expecting, especially from what we've seen, what's been able to be done. Um, it just looked like the Quest version with a little bit of uh, lighting. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is I, I, I don't have a huge issue with the way the game looks right i mean yes yes there is a performance issue that the the enemies need to run at the proper frame rate and not just blink into existence uh but as far as like the actual environments and the reflections and the lighting and everything like that it's fine right it's it's certainly not the best looking psvr game but it's certainly not the worst it's right there in the middle it's very very average there are like a little bit of reflections on things to kind of give a little uh, Sheen, there's, uh, I do, the flashlight is a major improvement as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it just gives a little bit of a, a better look to the overall game. Uh, it's fine, right? It's fine. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's, it's, it looks it's terrible. It's okay. It's, it's Unless fine. people are getting sick, that's a huge problem. That's not fine. Right. If people that's the are performance playing this... issue that I was talking about, that's separate. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. The, the visually, I was really, I was hoping it looked slightly better. It doesn't look bad. It, like you said, it looks fine, okay. But but there was like an abnormal amount of pop in. Mm -hmm. um, now, granted, this was the build that we were playing that they said 
this was right before the stream. I haven't tested this update oh, that did. went out today. Yeah, no, I went, um, I went in. I went into a level and I and I and tested it's still, it out. And it's still and it still had the pop in and everything. Still had the pop ins to the yeah. The, the, they have not addressed that kind of stuff yet. The only thing that they said they were going to address with this day one patch was the crossplay, uh, and the crossplay now works. And so you go in and like it, the frames per second on the enemies is still low. Uh, they still pop in. I, um, you know, occasionally it, it's very obvious, and occasionally it's not. Um, and so uh, that that has not been addressed yet. I think we get super lucky that they decided to be like, oh, we can switch these aim sticks really fast. We can add that, throw it into this patch. Uh, but that's but that is all I expect to have seen. Um, so yeah, it's it's still it's it still looks exactly the same as my stream from this morning. Uh, real quick, Gatorade wow. twenty three, the HTO two H two HTO despising game cap. Rare. Oof. Ten dollar tip says, I don't know, guys. At this point, I feel if VR doesn't start receiving a steady stream of AAA games, the player base will not just continue to dwindle but fall out. Uh, here's hoping PSVR two delivers. Dude, I'm one hundred percent with you. I will deliver. I'm one hundred percent with you. Yeah, PSVR two will deliver. But yeah, man, it's been it's been a steady decline for a couple years now. Um, it's been it's been a real shame that we haven't been able to indie get games are games. a great compliment indie games are a great compliment to a strong platform but yeah I mean you know indie games were a wonderful addition to PlayStation 4 uh, this previous gen but that's not what sold the, the what sold consoles that's something that you get into you know as a compliment to everything else triple a games are what catches the mainstreams attentions uh, a, a mainstream audience's attention. And uh, yeah, those are absolutely essential for selling headsets. And then the indie developers benefit from that. There's some games that are, you know, could be worth it, uh, could could sell some headsets, but not on the level uh, that uh, AAA games have when it comes to budget for marketing and all that stuff. We'll be talking plenty of PSVR 2 soon, uh, as we always do. Right now, we need to focus on this game that is going to be available to early access members in 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, time to play with Game Cats with the five euro. Uh, oh no, five quid. It says, Dear developers, please don't fall out with Brian and AJ as they are the voice of the PSVR community. Thank you very much. It's nice well, to hear them. Thank um, you. Um, yeah, I'm, I've, I've, I'm talking to. We're the voice of the PlayStation VR community. I'm, I'm talking to Vertigo. <laughs> I'm, I'm, cop I'm talking to the developers of Vertigo Games behind the scenes. They are very, very nice people. These are good people. And my, my frustration, our frustration, is not against them as a personal thing. Uh, it is about the expectations that we were given and the expectations that we have uh, and the product that we have seen. It's never personal. It's never personal. We, we've reviewed a ton of bad games, and we always try to give developers as much time as they need to get those first patches in and like report on the current state of the launch but then say hey here's how it's been improved it's never personal we want every game to be as good as possible you know we are gamers we're not we're not we're not out to like destroy dev teams not that without there's couple, okay there, there's it. a there's a couple games maybe but <laughs> there are a couple, a couple examples I can think of. this is not one of them though right. um but but yeah, so the performance uh, is something that I'm going to be really interested to jump back in and see. Um, it sounds like it's the same, which is not good. Uh, it, it is not good. Uh, but but uh, you know that's that's the biggest issues right now. Is there's it seems to be you know for forty dollars I feel like it could be it could have a little bit more polish. But the big issue is that we have to wait for um we have to wait for a controller update for the moves in particular yeah. the dual shock was fine it just was boring as hell because it i don't know it just kind of took away from the experience and then uh and then the aim controller was reversed which i was just i could not believe it just um it. and sounds like that that has been corrected now as well luckily so it's at least Sounding like it's close to playable with the aim controller, which but is again, what we the, the item then. wheel and weapon wheel like need to be need to be need to be fixed in that. Um, yeah. So it's just it's just kind of it's still very messy. It still feels like a, very much a sloppy port. It, the version uh, patch one point oh one is certainly not the last thing that we need. We're gonna need quite a few patches to get this thing up and running in working order. Uh, AJ. Yo. Does that address our concerns for the PlayStation VR version itself? Um, yeah, I mean, those are two deal breakers uh, right <laughs> yeah. off the bat. 
For sure. And I think I think just because we don't have to spend all night on those issues doesn't mean the that they're uh, not super important. Yes. Um, but those are the two major things that need to be fixed. <clears throat> Does also, that mean also the we patch actually... trashed my save game? So if anybody started today earlier, uh, you guys have to start over from the beginning. Um, yeah. So, uh, does that mean we could talk about the game now? Uh, we can, um, as soon as we read out this tip from Mad Max, the metaverse game cat, VR with $2 tip says they said a patch in a week in that last tweet, AJ. Uh, so yeah, it, it was nice that they actually got out a patch today so that the aim controller isn't totally busted. Uh, but yeah, it's, it seems like it's going to take a while for this game to, uh, to get the real love it deserves from the developers. Um, yeah, man, let's, let's talk about, like, again, we, we played this all weekend long. Uh, we, we played it four player co-op, we played it with, uh, MRI and Nikulo, uh, the four of us going in and playing on the standard difficulty, uh, and kind of like going through the entire game, like just level by level by level and beating the entire campaign from beginning to end. And then, uh, we, we all went back and played a little bit of single player with the AI. And then we all went back in and played a little bit of the harder difficulties together, uh, and so I, I feel as though we've got quite a few hours of this game under our belt. And so I think we know, I think we're pretty capable of reviewing this at this point. Yeah, absolutely. I spent uh, several hours with this game. And so for those who don't know, uh, this game is very much like Left for Dead, which let me explain uh, real quick, is a four player co-op uh, zombie shooter, but it has this survival element to where you kind of all start out in this this safe room, you have to you have to run across the level, and then um, you know of course eliminating hordes of they call them snow breed in this game. Um, they're zombies, and that, they're they're basically snow zombies, <laughs> ice zombies, snow zombies, monster snow zombies, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you eliminate hordes and hordes and hordes of them, um, and then to basically till you get to the end of the level. Along the way, there are some little items you can pick up, and there's different structures to this. But anyways, the easy way to put it is zombie shooter survival, in which uh, if your whole team goes down, you lose your your special items you collected, and you also don't get the reward at the end. And the reward increases based on the difficulty. So there's only five levels in this game. Um, five levels total. And uh, it's, yeah, it's basically set up to where you replay those same five levels over and over and you kind of grind a little bit. And that's kind of where part of the problem with the game is. Um, well, yeah, I mean, because the objective in each level, besides getting to the end of it without, you know, without dying, uh, is, is searching around for these floppy disks. And the floppy disks are the thing that you're doing in this game. Finding those is the thing you're doing other than killing zombies. And when you find the floppy disk, you gotta throw it to your inventory uh, and then throw it into a, a drive slot in the safe room and then continue on and you get the, re that floppy disk rewards you at the end with some unlockable upgrade for a weapon. Sometimes, sometimes it's something you already have and so it just gives you harvest points and so that feels like a waste. But that's what you're doing. You're playing these levels over and over and over again on harder and harder difficulties to try to, to go find these floppy disks to unlock more uh, upgrades for the weapons that you have. And right. that is the gameplay loop right there in a nutshell. And and this is the this is what's going to be interesting here is that you and I slightly differ on how we felt about yeah. the game, our enjoyment for the game. I was a big big fan of left for dead and i feel like this is definitely the closest thing to that experience it's kind of uh it's kind of a little bit more like you know from an indie developer not not a tr huge triple a uh developer like valve but um but i really really enjoyed the game loop for what it was i uh i enjoyed you know especially with co-op um, I enjoyed going around, watching each other's backs, having to heal each other, having to communicate, um, and at, in the meantime, harvesting, uh, harvesting, they just call it harvesting. What are you harvesting? <laughs> harvesting the harvest. <laughs> I don't ask questions. And you get it from the snow breed, and then you kind of use that as currency. And um, I, uh, I really, really enjoy 
the game loop in this. The problem is, is that I feel feel that the staying power of the game might be a little bit problematic. Um, I don't mind going back in. I think it's addicting enough to where I don't mind going back in and grinding and grinding and trying to get a new stock, um, a new barrel. You know, there's all these things that increase your the how increase like how well your ep, your weapon fires, aims, all sorts of stuff. The recoil. There's also a bunch of challenges uh, in the game that help you unlock different paint jobs for your for your gun and it's stuff just like killing a certain amount of snow breed getting a certain amount of headshots and uh all these little things i think uh for an indie dev especially are really good uh game loop devices the progression system wise and and kind of give you more incentive incentive to keep replaying it so when you enjoy the gameplay so much it's like you get to continue playing it but you kind of enjoy the game uh you get to a little bit of a reward as well. Matster Game Catster with a one hundred dollar tip says, "Hello, everyone. Glad to be back. Mondays suck. Pizza for everyone. Thank uh, you, Matster Games Caster. What up, Matster? Glad Game you're Game. back. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, we'll have to catch up That's soon. Uh, thank you for your generosity, big time. I like that you keep qualifying this for 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 an indie dev. Dot dot dot." Because yeah, because this feel yeah to me this feels like a twenty dollar game by a very small indie team, uh, that uh, that just doesn't have really enough content to even justify selling it on day one. That that's that's how I feel. I don't I don't think the gameplay loop is fun enough. We you run around. Okay, this is this is this is Brian's angry rant. Everyone everyone get your popcorn. You 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 team up and you've got you know you're with three friends and you run out into the snow. There's all five levels. They all look the same, right? You're running through snow-covered environments that all kind of look like the next snow-covered environment. You run into an arcade or a hospital or whatever, and guess what? Inside, they all look like kind of office buildings. And then it's and so you've got these really repetitive interiors, really repetitive exteriors, and and the levels kind of drag out, shockingly, a little too long. And I was like, that was something I was not anticipating. They were saying, oh, they're about 20 minutes each, and I was like, oh, that sucks. And now I played, and I'm like, yeah, that's about you know, five to seven minutes too long. Um, and then and, and you go out and you kill the snow breed. And, 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 and then you enter the next area. You get locked into that area. You, you kill the snow breed. You go to the next area. You kill the snow breed. All the while, you're just kind of looking around looking for a floppy disk. Um, casually looking for a floppy disk. Like, it's, not, it's, it's certainly not like, oh, I have to open every single drawer because there's not really a lot of drawers or lockers or anything else to open. Like, they didn't make, they, they, it's like they wanted to drive home that, like, you have to explore, but then they didn't give you any way to have to explore. And so it felt... Yeah, uh, I agree with you. There, there is, like, there is some room to explore, but the execution of it isn't the greatest. There's, um, in addition to the floppy disk, there's, like, a key card that you can get um, and all the locations of this and, and some drawers that open are kind of randomized. So it, it is supposed yeah. to make it a little bit different. Kind each time of you randomized. Play it. It's um, like, oh, sometimes an, sometimes an ammo box, ammo crate will be on this sofa, and sometimes it's going to be on that sofa. It's like <laughs> the, the randomization is like, and sometimes, and, oh, sometimes the horde will appear from the left, and it's, sometimes it'll appear from the right. But you know what? Right. Save your fucking randomization and make it good. Because guess what? None of the randomization helps this whatsoever. It should, they should just change the location of these things and make them more, more difficult to find uh, on different difficulties. I don't need any randomization when I'm replaying over and over. It doesn't, doesn't change anything for me. There's no surprise. There's no, oh my God, I can't believe we found the fucking upgrade. No, it, there's none of that. It's very, up oh, here it is. Up oh, here it is. Okay, got it. Let's move on. And it's just shoot, 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 move to the next area. Shoot, 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 shoot. I mean, it is yeah. about as straightforward as, as a zombie shooter as I've ever played in my entire life. And the fact that they sacrificed a story uh, or like, or, or, or an actual campaign, like I mean, compare this to Arizona Sunshine for a campaign. And Arizona Sunshine had like areas where you stand and there's like this Gatling gun, or there's a, um, or or the mine shaft, which was all super dark and creepy and scary, and you're looking around for keys. Uh, there's all these different times during this game where they could have done interesting things like that, but just didn't. At the very at the near the end of the first level, there's this parking garage area or whatever where like you have to go turn a crank to like lower something so you can continue on. Right. And of course, you turn the crank, 
right? Turn the crank, turn the crank. Okay. And then, okay, here comes the snow breed. Cool. Let's go kill the snow breed. And then you go back and, and you do your thing. Why, like, why didn't they have one person have to turn the crank constantly while the rest of them defend that person? Like, there's just no examples of anything like that where, like, oh, this is the idea here in this level that we have to do, or this is the objective. No, the objective's always the same. And that's fine if the moment to moment gameplay was like super crazy interesting. But I, I, I've got no desire right now to, to go back into the game and find upgrades for the weapons that I already have that only maybe slightly impact that weapon in some random way, right? And so, and, and then I take that weapon and go, what? I go back to the level and replay it to find another minor upgrade to maybe a weapon I'm not even using and just keep doing this over and over. It's, it's so grindy and not in a good way. And so, then, so then this is <laughs> this is the difference is that when you talk about I I agree with you saying it's very straightforward yes again the way we feel about that though is a little bit different yeah. I am you know on the record probably should be for not being the biggest fan of Arizona Sunshine a lot of that was due to bugs though um, but I did find the story the the voice acting and stuff was absolute cringe. And it's a little bit better in this one. They don't they don't bother me as much. We'll get to the, the, the details on that. But I mean, like as a whole, hearing the voice acting and everything, it's fine, right? Yeah. Um, the difference is that I actually enjoyed the shooting and and the moment to moment gameplay. Like, yes, it is a lot of just hordes coming at you and you're shooting them. But I actually enjoyed that. Um, part of it, like I think the gameplay, the shooting and all that is fun. Uh, I, I do like the AI. Um, it's not as varied as I'd like, but Especially they do. Especially the enemy little, variety. There's just so the, little of it. The, there's not a deep enemy variety, but they, they do these little tweaks to each different one. Some, some are uh, running at you. Some are walking at you. When they get shot... Um, you see the impact, the way they react to your bullets. I thought I thought was very very, it's very satisfying. Very nice. But what does it do for the gameplay? Nothing. Nothing. Some well, of them crawl at does, you. Some because, of them climb on the when ceiling. You're shooting some them, run at you. But you're just right. Shoot 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 shoot. shoot. It, it There's mixes no strategy. It up, it, There's zero it, strategy. There's no strategy to it. But but it's it's more like it's just more satisfying because like you, you don't shoot their arm, you shoot their, I mean, you miss their head, you hit their arm and their arm goes flying off or you shoot their legs out and they start their upper torso starts crawling to you. There's enemies crawling on the ceiling and stuff like that. The difference between this and, and, and all that stuff, I really, really appreciate it. The difference is left for dead. Um, when there was like a signature zombie, usually there was some kind of audio cue and they were actually kind of like terrifying. Like like when like everybody the the situation got really intense when when you had one of those lickers or those witches uh, that showed up. And these enemies are kind of like, okay, there's just some bigger, stronger ones, but they're way slower. And they're not really like that huge big of a threat. Yeah. Um and, and so um yeah. Virtual Stranger so, says if you play on master difficulty, it isn't all ho hum. That's the level I'm playing right, right now. We we did play right. The diff, and that's another thing I did like about it was increasing the difficulty. You definitely see a difference. I mean, they that even tells you everything that's different about the different difficulties. Yeah. Um, you do want to start out from kind of the either normal or veteran though um, to start upgrading your gun, at least getting some attachments for it, getting some loot stuff, um, but. But then, as you as it gets into the harder difficulties, yeah, they they actually even look a little bit different by having more like ice and and shield uh, like ice kind of protective yeah. stuff on them. It takes them more bullets to kill them. It takes more bullets to kill them. But again, when you see the ice blow away from their face, to me personally, little details like that I actually thought were really satisfying, just from the shooter gameplay standpoint. And yeah, I mean, I. I I didn't. I didn't care about what they looked like as I was shooting them. I just was interested in not dying, and, and I shot. So yeah. I shot them, and I didn't care what they looked like when they were falling. Um, so that, that didn't interest me like really at all. Um, yeah, this is a this this is this gameplay loop is what will either make or break the game for you. Um, the problem is is like if 
if I'm replaying these levels to upgrade my weapon, and then I'm upgrading my weapon so I can play the same exact levels on a harder difficulty, and then playing this harder difficulty so I can upgrade my weapon, like, that's the gameplay loop, and there's no end game. There's nothing satisfying at the end. You know, Bel Ramio and I were talking earlier in voice chat about how, like, Swords of Gargantua... Uh, it was this game where like you, you you'd blast through and you would you would die at a certain floor you know you only make it to floor 50 or 60 or 70 and you gradually get closer to the boss you know as you slowly upgrade your weapons and it has this like roguelite like roguelite quality to it um where you like we seeing something you've never seen before and making it further into the game and then when you finally get to the boss he just demolishes you the first time like you know hands down and then and then after fighting the boss 10 times you finally find you finally take him down and then you and then you keep keep doing this ascension to the boss, and then finally you get to take down the boss in like seconds, right? You've like mastered the game, and now you're just like fucking upgrading your weapons nonstop, and it's like this this god mode difficulty, right? It's crazy. Um, I did like that? There is yeah, none of that here. There's there's nothing satisfying. It's like okay, so I'm I'm upgrading my weapons so I can play the same levels, so I can play the same levels, so I can upgrade my weapons. And I was like, you just created a gameplay loop with no satisfaction at the end of it. There's nothing the structure of it, about it, the structure of it is kind of strange because you they kind of throw all the enemies at you at once. You kind of see them all within the first yeah, level. Well, five. Um, there's yeah, and then like they really could have like fleshed out some of these characters and kind of introduced them one at a time. You see them all, all five or whatever in the in the first level, and then there's a, there's a boss. And then there's the one in the second level, and they actually take away the boss fight at the end by by the third so and weird. fourth level, and and so like it, it's weird because it kind of gets like easier because now you don't have a big bad boss at the very end of it for the for the third and fourth level. So yeah, the way it like introduces it and and stuff, I agree, is kind of weird. You would have liked maybe just a juggernaut, the big. Uh, uh, SWAT team looking guy as the first boss and he's got lots of health um, maybe the the brute as the second boss then make your way all the way to the, the really really big smasher boss um, or have them you know placed a little bit more strategically um, but it but it's a very weird structure and and I think they could have you know some of those enemies that like crawl on the ceiling towards you are really cool enemies and I really thought that rather than just spamming a whole bunch of weak ones at you they really could have focused on just having like one stronger one that's like kind of unique and you have to sit there and work with your team to take out that one for for a little bit and and maybe that gives you some loot or or a big prize but but that's yeah you kind of just a lot of them just are kind of cannon fodder for the most part and you just kind of blast through them and and you go about your day and and that's where it kind of takes away some of the intenseness of the game yeah uh Nadi, what's up with the five dollar tip? Says I canceled my pre-order. This was a cash grab for them. No love or care was put into the PSVR version. That says a lot. I don't have the patience. Um, it wasn't obviously. It wasn't on purpose, but but I agree. You know, we said beforehand that approach with caution. That you know, even if you got to pay the extra five bucks, let us give you the the thumbs up first. Make sure there was no issues. Yeah. And the PS ver, uh, VR version ended up having way more issues than we anticipated. Like we said, we we knew the controllers were going to be an issue, but they were actually somehow worse. And then you stack on that the performance issues that that we see. Um, they This is the problem here. For $40, $40 is usually what we consider a triple A VR game price for the yeah. most part. Um, you know, and, and this game for $40... We just we really would have liked to see more polish and uh, less issues, more polish. Like I would love to see, you know, the graphically look a little bit better, a little, little bit better, and uh, and certainly the controls need to be fixed. This is uh, f premium prices for something that is not premium. So when when we criticize them for this. That's what you get when you ask for that kind of price. We expect a complete game yep. for forty dollars, and the the problem potentially in the future is that, you know, when we finished our first run through of the campaign of this game, uh, it did feel a little short. It felt like there should have been 
for forty dollars, there should have been at least like three, four more locations uh, before before it ended. And using using some of the things that we mentioned, like kind of stretching out the boss fights, fights and and mixing it up. Um, like you said, the variety of environments. Um, I think the environment, the setting, the music, the sound design, those are all great. But there's they could have used more variety to them for sure. Um, yeah. They I think being covered in snow and and whatnot kind of made them look even more similar because well, i think this is their way of being able to put out more content more maps without having to put in as much work and putting t as much detail in them and making it playable without too much effort on playstation vr or the quest uh because because of the limitations of the hardware right it's like if you have like this field of grass that's that's flowing and it's like suddenly you gotta like animate blades of grass or whatever you gotta do yeah this is this this is a, a pretty easy way to circumvent those you know, hardware limitations having yep. to cross play on all platforms having to create the same levels on all platforms i get it kevin russ in the chat says lol brian really hates this game i want to be very clear that i actually had a good time with this game but i'm very upset with i mean obviously the playstation vr port uh which i've got a sneaky suspicion there's a port studio behind this and vertigo didn't check out their work before it got published um but on top of that it's it feels so light on content. They are charging us forty or fifty dollars for the deluxe edition um, for content that is not in the game yet. You, you know we don't know how much content they're going to deliver for free. Are they, is this going to be like Firewall where you pay once and it's like oh every season here's a new map, here's a new contractor, here's this, here's that. You know are we going to keep getting new weapons because that would be nice. Are we going to keep getting new maps? That would be nice. Are they going to implement new enemy varieties, types, enemy varieties, uh, boss types? That would be nice, but are they going to start charging for any of that? Right. We don't know, that's... man. They have not shared the roadmap, and I think that's fucking sacrilege at this point to charge forty or fifty dollars for your game and not and, and not tell people what they're going to get for that money. I, I I don't I don't think that's cool at all, and and I and I really think that people should be really upset about this right now because you're gonna. I think most people are going to play this for a day and go, all right. I've seen most of this, and then uh, the hardcore people that really really like the gameplay loop. We'll play it for a week and then go, okay, now what? Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I'm I'm the hardcore people that are into the gameplay loop, and that's why I said the staying power of this game still has me worried because I already started playing by myself some, and uh, and it started to – I'm already starting to feel the grind of the levels because they're, what, 20, 30-minute levels, five minutes each. There's only five locations. Um I really, really hope that they have free content planned for this game and can expand it because I don't think they've fully lined up with the forty dollar price point. If they were to charge twenty dollars and then or, or thirty, I would be okay with thirty dollars even. I think it's ten bucks too much um, for for the amount of staying power that it has. The difference is, is I had an absolute blast playing through it on the Quest Two, not the PSVR version yet. Um, but it I mean, can, was, can, can it was we one clarify? day. Absolute blast. Like, just want to be absolute sure that we're using the right terminology. Absolute blast is what you want the box quote to be. I had an absolute blast okay. playing this game. Yes, okay. I do think it it needs more content. But again, I played on the. I'm talking about the Quest Two version, mm -hmm. not the broken PSVR version. Yes, that's why I said this is going to be an interesting review because I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was a lot of fun, um, and I wanted to see more of it. it. Was it perfect in every way? No, but but I still had a lot of fun with it, and uh, even played by myself. Uh, with the AI after and and still, uh, it definitely took some of the fun out of it. it. It's meant to be played multiplayer, but but yeah, man, and it's okay. Like you liked it slightly less than I did, <laughs> yeah, or, or or a lot less than I did, but yeah. you still liked it, you know. Yeah, when you say you had an absolute blast, my feeling is I was I was sort of kind of waiting for it to get good the whole time. I was like, this feels average, this looks average, it plays average. There's nothing. There's no like, where's where's the loot? Where's the loot? I had this. I. You know, with, with, I enjoyed customizing. I enjoyed going through and then, you know, the challenge of beating the level, mm -hmm. the way the difficulty increases and it gets harder. And I use my new uh, assault rifle that I've upgraded at the, at the workstation and whatnot. I can see everything uh, using the arcade machine. I can see everything that I've upgraded with. I can customize the paint stuff, um, different loadouts that I could go in there with. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. And then um, coming back 
and then you know just ba- like barely making it out from a run, coming back using that upgrade. The problem is after a couple times of playing the same levels over and over, mm-hmm. uh, especially one like a level that you really like or a level that you know might be a little bit easier to grind, you start to feel the repetition there. But I think the uh, I think the little bit of changing where they where everything spawns and where they come from and how they attack and then uh, and then changing the rewards that you get that yeah. kept me going yes I enjoyed it enough to continue doing that that being said that's like a couple days at best like yeah. that's not that's not I don't, that's not something like firewall that I played for like a month straight this is something that was like yeah it was it's it's a blast right now but how long is that going to continue I don't know I will say uh, it felt actually real quick. Mad Max, the metaverse game cat VR with the $2 tip says, what about the two pre-order arenas? Uh, was that just for the uh, PVP stuff? Is that, is that what was given to us for the pre-order? Um, um, there's with the pre-order uh, you get, you get access to like, I guess the season one content is what it says. And there's one more PVP arena. We got to talk about the PVP too. Yeah. Um, Which and I, then you get, I you do get one that. access to one more location. Let's, Talk about the PvP. All right, so you're given you're given two arenas to fight in, which I think were were decent. They were they were pretty large and pretty buried. Gave you a lot of different uh, entrances to every single room, and, and it made it tough to camp. Uh, so I, I do think that they were laid out really well. There's some verticality, right? There's generally two floors to each one. Uh, a lot of places to hide. A lot of places to uh, it, it. A lot of places to surprise people. Um, but in and we were able to play because uh, obviously the game wasn't out when we played it. Uh, we played the PvP, which is capable of four v four. We played it two v two, and I'll say, man, that after spending a lot of time with the game itself, this actually felt pretty refreshing. I was like, this this is fun. I could I could imagine spending some time in here. There's not there's like no real rewards for doing it. It's just kind of a time waster. But I I had a lot of fun with it. I thought that was really fun uh, to be able to take out your friends, just play PvP in these uh, you know in these snow covered worlds the pvp was a lot better than i was expecting it was a lot more fun because it kind of um similar to how saints and sinners carried over some of its survival mechanics to uh to the horde mode this game takes some of those same mechanics all the same mechanics uh into the pvp map and the pvp maps are kind of rearranged they're like already levels that were in the game and they kind of crush them together, make them a small look, little location to fight around. And and uh, it was better than I was expecting. It's not really my thing. So, like, it's not something – it's not the reason I would play the game or buy the game. But it but it was nice that for being such a tacked-on mode that it was actually – that it actually worked. Yeah. I thought it was a, a nice surprise. It's super simple. Like, you don't go in with any loadouts. You just find weapons uh, in the environment. You find, right. find pipe bombs. You find uh, health. And and you do your best to try to survive, um, right? And it's fun. It's fun. The, the matches was, last a long fun. time. It's a good time, and that's it. Yeah. Like there's really not a lot to like to say about it, other than I'm kind of glad it's there, it's just to sort of kill time and mix things up between, uh, you know, between trying to take down the other levels. It's 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 a good refreshing feeling after kind of doing the same gameplay loop uh, for the core game. We got a ten dollar yeah. tip from Alvo VR just with a couple of, with a pair of eyes. <laughs> how's lurking. It, how's it going, Steve? Lurking. <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so, um, so about the there's a couple things I want to get into that sure. real quick about back to the main game that uh, some cool things. Um, there's a lot of options in this game, and there's uh. I don't know how you're going to do some of like there's there's a lot of automatic stuff and then there's a, a, like automatic reloading where you kind of take the gun and you just put it over your uh ammo belt yeah. um and uh and then there's a manual one the manual one is kind of like no <laughs> point in it like like you get more harvest for it apparently yeah. but and and I think it, it was actually like more immersive slightly but but I think it's plenty immersive, plenty fun to just you know just dump your your gun over your belt and and reload that way. Um, yeah, there's gonna despite, be a lot of people out there that are like, oh, I'm gonna do the manual reload. I'm gonna do the manual reload because I need to do manual reload in VR games. It needs to be VRF. And I and I was yeah. kind of with you right until I played the game and I was like, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way we're doing manual reloading. Like this is yeah. Like, this, this, I wanted to use it, but it's just not. 
it's not practical. It's right. it's not really worth it. Um, there's a couple cool things in the game too. Like every time you reach a safe room, there's a little face scanner. And it's so pointless. Like you just like put your face up to it, and it's like scanning face, and and uh, it's it makes it easier. Um, or I mean, it's it's just a cool little thing. Like, hey, this is something you could only do in VR, so why not? Mm. Um, I like yeah. I like the little touch like that. You couldn't just walk up to it in non VR, and it would do the exact same. You thing. could, but but you wouldn't lean in and put your face into it. Though. I think that face that, that face scanner you know. makes me realize how non not VR AF this game is. Because I'm like, oh, this is, <laughs> I, at least there's this, and I'm like, what? Um, but there's not anything else that makes it super VRF. Like I, dude, like I mean, I would love, I would love even like a fucking ladder to climb. I would love to be able to jump off ledges instead of just being teleported down the ledge. You know, it's like you see your teammates literally jump le- leaping off the ledge, the full animation. Yeah. But when yeah. you do it, it's instant, and then sometimes you do it accidentally. You're like, I just looking over the ledge, and boom, like shit, I didn't want to yeah. jump down there yet. Now I can't get back up. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that, especially in the PvP mode. Yeah, it when you get to an, a ledge, it just teleports you down. And then, yeah, it is weird that you look back and you see your everyone like animating and jumping down, but everybody just uh, everybody just tell like you just teleport when you see it. And for the PvP, it's actually problematic. Like they really should just let us just jump down with it. I'm sure that was like a a motion sickness kind of thing, but um, but. But yeah, and like I said, things that makes it feel cheaper than it is. I I totally agree. Um, Now, uh, I also really did like the audio design. I thought the three D audio design is really good in this. Mm -hmm. The the soundtrack is is okay. It kind of lets you know uh, when when stuff is coming. Um, All they do the the plot of this game, man, is so weird. It's just Snowbreed. Like they should have just called this game Snowbreed because yeah. that is all they yell constantly through the game. Every objective you go, they're like, there's Snowbreed. You got to go kill the Snowbreed. And uh, and when you're running through the game, Snowbreed, Snowbreed over there. Like that's 98% of the banter that's in the game. I wish there's that a- was 98% of the banter because when they call <laughs> me Jimmy, it definitely takes me out of the immersion. You, so you're playing four players and we're all yelling at each other, talking to each other. Nick's doing call outs because he thinks it's strategic and, and, and there's no strategy here so i'm like why are you even fucking doing call outs and so, I, I thought it was i know i know that's to the fun anyway so so we were all yelling at each other and then our characters were all yelling at each other and calling each other by name and i'm like what are you doing like we are the characters like don't you don't need to add voiceovers to the characters we are the voiceovers for the characters just right, remove right. it for the multiplayer what's the point Right, I didn't mind them saying Snowbreed to let you know they're coming, but when they're when we're like shooting and they're like, "Nice shot, Jimmy," and we have no idea who Jimmy is. Right, am I like, Jimmy? Are you Jimmy? We're, Who's playing like, as we Jimmy? Were, we, we were all shooting at the same time. <laughs> who is Jimmy? We're all wearing masks. Oh yeah, I did like I do Who's love the Jimmy? art design. <laughs> I I am a big fan of the art design in this game as well. Yeah. Um, I I like I like the way they look. I think I think uh, all the character models and everything look really cool. Um, there's a lot of things I really do like about this game. And, uh, I think, yeah, somebody in the chat was pointing out. Yeah. Like there's, there's a lot of little details that, that I really do appreciate about this game. Um, a a lot of the issues, but here's the thing though. So you want to play this game single player. This is where it gets a little bit tougher. Um, we didn't even talk about this. Yeah, you definitely want to start off. Uh, hopefully, you've had a chance to play with some people first and get a feel for the game, get a, get an idea for the mechanics, get familiar with the levels and enemies, and then get some upgrades. Because playing by yourself, especially on the higher difficulties, gets a little tougher. The AI, they don't really care too much about self-preservation. <laughs> um, they, I played on Veteran. I played through an entire level, the third level, I think, on Veteran, and they, um, they kind of were like taking damage all the time. They don't pick up items. They don't do anything like that. They kind of help you, but you have to get them started. Like they're not going to go and just do, they're definitely not proactive. Um, they follow you around. They wait for you to start shooting. Um, and then they start shooting. Uh, and, they they don't heal themselves. They don't care, use items. Um, so like every save point, I kind of had to like stab them, jab them with the needle. Oh yeah, you want to talk about the healing too? How do you, how do you like that that needle? Brian, everybody has an obsession with stabbing people in the forehead with the needle for healing them. Botox. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, it's, and let you, me just say, you can stab him it, anywhere. But why wouldn't you stab him in the face? It's the most VR interaction <laughs> I got in this game. You, Kevin, you, you had to have more. You had to have fun with that part about it. I did. Um, I did, people. dude. Okay, that's the thing. I want like we are talking a lot about a lot, a lot of negatives. I just, I just felt like this game was very average overall. The number that kept floating in my head roughly was like 7.0. Just like it's very average as far as like VR games go. And that 7 has a lot to do with the content and just about how average everything about it is from top to bottom. Right. And so, but, but that doesn't mean it's not, you know, worth playing through once or twice and, and doing what we did. I just don't think it's worth playing through once or twice for the price they're asking for it. Right, right. right? I all, understand. All of that, all of that affects the final review and all that affects the score that's in my head. And so, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm at like a seven, despite all the awful things I'm saying about it. And despite, all, you know, making it sound like I didn't have a single second of fun. It was fun to go through with friends. I don't, I, I did a few runs by myself just to kind of grind and do the things I wanted to do and to and test out the AI and everything. And I was like, Ooh, this is so much better with friends. Like I wouldn't even, if you're going to play this solo, people were, you know, people were like, oh, I'm not going to buy this because it's multiplayer. And I was like, oh no, there's a single player. You can play it single player. Don't play it single player. Just don't. It's kind of boring. Yeah. Unless, unless you just want to grind a little bit and don't have anybody around. Um, it's doable. But it's definitely not ideal for, for playing. This This game really is all about a multiplayer experience for sure. And we don't get a lot of good co-op games. And I think that's another thing that I'm that I really want to um, – that I'm hoping it gets all sorted out because uh, I did like the co-op aspect. That's my favorite kind of multiplayer is co-op multiplayer. Um, speaking of which, with the AI though, man, and, and self-preservation or lack thereof, they like to cross you like – crazy uh when i was playing and oh, shooting yeah. there'd be hordes it is like another game within itself which is like shoot shoot wait for your teammate to cross <laughs> shoot wait for your teammate to cross shoot 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 yeah. wait they for your teammate getting to in cross. the line of fire and they and they yeah they get in the line of fire like absolutely crazy and uh so that's that's something that probably could be a little bit uh improved i would also do the same thing to my teammates. I would also be crossing. <laughs> friends. Like, so, you know, so it's, it's, there is some communication involved in terms, in terms of being like, you know, making sure that no one runs off ahead because staying in a group is always the best idea. Um, as, as soon as yeah. somebody runs off ahead and then you get separated from the pack, you're pretty much, you're pretty much dead. Um, and so if there's one thing to take away from this, from for, as far as like a strategy goes, just always stay with your team, period. That is, that's all you need. Um, yeah. MoFun VR, we are aware. You, I know you missed the beginning of the show, but we did delay the beginning of the show so I could check out the new patch. And we are talking about the patched version of PlayStation VR. Uh, Red Rover, the yes. FN GameCat with the five dollar tip says, "That's top to me. He's the king. That's Van Halen for the unknowing." Thank you, Red Rover. Send top to me. <laughs> Joe Grover, right over. Darth Vader, nice. the Game Cat with the two dollar tip says, "Good vibes to all." Yeah, good vibes yeah, to all, guys. I, you know, the last thing we ever want to do is turn this into some kind of console war. It's it's a game, um, and uh, it just came out, and it's a little rough, uh, and uh, and a little low on little light on content, uh, and that's and that's what yeah. we're trying to impart over you over the last hour. Yeah, I'm gonna be checking it out, and I haven't had a chance to play the patch myself, although Brian did, so I'll be checking it out. But yeah. but yeah, we man, to make sure we had the most up to date information. We did, we certainly didn't want to be uh, sitting here talking about a game that that had already been updated, and all of our complaints were no longer valid. All the complaints we logged today are, as far as patch 1.01 is concerned, totally accurate. AJ. Yeah, man. Yo. Are you ready for a little game of PSVR 20 questions? No, not really. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. Come on. Don't do this to me. Come on. Don't do this to me. Let me let's, let's have our final closing thoughts. Is 7.0. I'm guessing, is, Done. Is it my, my, my pick or whatever? Uh, for, for 20 questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fi I, I fi dude, final final yet. thoughts um, are this: this is a great this this, this is a great um, this I, again. This this feels like a twenty dollar game uh, for the amount of content and and the amount of actual gameplay variety and the number of things you're doing. You're not you know every level kind of feels the same. There are occasionally little things that make them different, but they all kind of look the same. They all kind of feel the same. They all kind of play the same. You're not looking for different items for, and you're just looking for uh, the floppy disk that will upgrade your weapon. When you upgrade your weapons, you go back in and you play the same exact levels in order to find the disk and upgrade your weapons. You upgrade your weapons, you go back in to play the exact same levels so that you can upgrade your weapons. 
There's no end game. There's nothing to look forward to. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm just looking forward to upgrading my weapon so I can play the exact same levels again. It's like there, there, there's something missing in this game. And it's like the game. It's like, where is where is the game? Where is the objective? Where is the end? There's, you know, people, you can you guys can scream Left for Dead all you want, but I, left for, there's where's the variety of Left for Dead? Right. Where's well, I mean, I, I remember Left 4 Dead playing it. I know Left 4 Dead did have more variety and a deeper, deeper variety, but it was still just the game loop of playing with friends, doing doing the moment to moment gameplay is what made that game. That game, you played the same levels a whole bunch as well. I, it wasn't I like that. super different. When, um, I want that. I'm totally it, it down to play deeper, after the ball levels over deeper and, and over. fleshed out. But, there's, but they didn't yep. give us a good reason to play the levels over and over. They just didn't. Like this, this game would have been great if you were going and looking for different loot every single time, like so that you could go craft different items. Oh, this time I'm going to go in and just search for metal. This time I'm going to go in and just search for rope. This time I'm going to search and just search for rubber noodles. Like, give me and then and we take all those web items back and then we craft mm -hmm. different things. Like you go in with a different objective, but you don't go into these levels with a different objective. Ever. You go in and play the exact same level in the exact same way. Oh, and it gets harder if you choose the harder difficulty. And you find rarer things that upgrade your weapon. And then you upgrade your... I mean, it's it's so basic. I feel like as VR gamers, like we're in, we've are in, we got this Stockholm Syndrome going on where we're just like, well, that's as good as we're going to get, so we should be fucking happy. And, and, I, and I just don't agree with that sentiment. I'm, I'm, as, I, as, I, VR I goes, as VR gets older and older, and as, 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 the, as developers are able to make be bigger and better games... We should be expecting more, but I feel like this is a game we should have expected five years ago, not a game that's ready for launch today. I like this game. Uh, so, so I like this game way more than Arizona Sunshine. I had a lot of issues with that game, um, and and I thought this improved in just about every single aspect of that game, uh, minus maybe the the level variety um, and uh, weapon variety. And what and, and zombie variety. variety but but no i look man i had a fun time playing this the problem is i have yet to have fun playing this on psvr and that's the most that's the most biggest issue right now yeah. is that i have only had fun playing this on other platforms i have not had fun playing this one bit on psvr yet and that is the big problem here so yeah it's big tough to no for me it's tough to compare it to arizona sunshine because they're despite the fact that they're both zombie shooters they're radically different games like you if 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 arizona sunshine forced me to replay the same place over and over again with with no reward for doing so uh, i mean then, then i could then i could start comparing these one to one i think this thing i think this does some things better than arizona sunshine mainly ditching the overarching narrative because doesn't need one it's like just give us an excuse to go kill stuff that and, that, and it did that um but but it, it 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 didn't excel in so many other ways like almost every other way um yeah a lot of the a lot of the stuff to the the actual levels that you're traversing on um the most variety you get is kind of all in the background um the the stuff that you're actually walking on and fighting on are kind of the same because there's some nice stuff that I wanted to see. Like I was like, oh, like a like a here's a here's a highway that's really cool. But you're kind of like going around the highway and you don't actually go like on the highway. Mm -hmm. um, there's like cities all around you and stuff, but you don't actually like you're never like in the city. You know what I mean? Like there's buildings everywhere, <laughs> um, so it's kind of weird. But but yeah, man, I'm I'm with you. I'm um, for right now. It's it's for me. You know, I, I hope they get patched. This is the good news, is that all of the issues that I have with this game can be fixed with patches. And yeah. that's that's the difference between a game like this and The Walking Dead Onslaught, which was an absolute disaster at launch. Uh, there was no saving The Walking Dead Onslaught for me. Unless there they is patched in the four-player co-op that they, that they <laughs> ditched. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this game can be fixed with some with some patches it needs some polish it needs some content, content. it obviously yeah. needs new controls we're gonna have to wait and see the new control scheme they can do it though if they do it right um and and still even if they do that it's like a little ten dollars more than i'd like to pay but i'm okay with that sometimes sometimes yeah. um I'm, so I'm, again i'm at, I'm at tw this game should have been twenty dollars with the amount of content it has uh for me i know you said closer to 30 you'd be comfortable with um, yeah. but I just don't, I just think there's very, very little content here. And I think that as VR gamers, we're getting accustomed to paying more for less than, than flat screen gamers. I don't think that's acceptable. I do think no. that 
Vertigo needs to put out a roadmap and they need to tell people what they're going to deliver free of charge uh, for me to even tell people to buy this. Because as is, what, what, they, what they delivered uh, is very average, in my opinion, and, and, and way too expensive. Uh, and, and they just, before I tell anyone to pick this up, um, I just need to know what they're actually going to give us for, for the 40 or $50 we're going to spend. Uh, and I don't, and I don't think that's asking too much. In fact, I think that's, I think that's, uh, what everybody should be saying. I don't think anybody should be giving Vertigo a pass right now and saying, oh, don't worry, they'll take care of it and they'll, and they'll deliver content. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, that. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, I think they've got it right now set up so that they've, they're going to launch the game. They're going to see what people like, um, see what and then kind of expand on it by what is the most active depending on the game how the game does um and that you know that is supposed to work in theory at a lower price you know we're not paying when you charge forty dollars you're pay, that's a premium triple a vr game that's completed not a uh not a beta or anything like that and right now it's it feels a little bit like early access like it's got some kinks to iron out um, like it's got some more content that it needs and, and that's the big issue with the price right now. I agree. Six out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, the PlayStation version, I don't know. It, like what I played earlier. Yeah. yeah. It was like a four or five out of I, 10. Yeah. I can't even rate um, the PlayStation VR version. Cause all I'm saying is I, don't buy it yet. You know? Yeah. That's, that's all. That's the main thing we're saying is don't buy it yet yeah. until they fix it. So yeah, at least, and, at least they swap the sticks with the aim controller. At least it's, playable now because, yeah but uh, I, I don't know i don't know i have to go play it i have yeah. to go play it myself more with this right. latest update that hit right as we were doing the show right because even if the controls were fixed the game was not playable to me in its janky fra uh, frames per second state uh, so there's two big issues that they need to address on psvr yep. and until those get fixed i cannot recommend this game at all yeah i agree but Agreed. I I do think I do think that they're nice people, and I don't think that they're these horrible, you know, people or whatever. So I think they're gonna try and work on it, and uh, hopefully find some way to make it up to us as well. Um, and uh, I hope they deliver it because if not, sorry, yeah, not don't care then. <laughs> I agree. I agree with everything. Yeah, we I can't we can't even score it right now. It's just don't don't play it uh, until until all the patches have been delivered uh, because right now it's it's really rough, really rough. Yeah. So, AJ, now, now I'm ready. Twenty questions. <laughs> I ask so little. I just want to play twenty <laughs> questions. You want to play a hundred questions? No. No. Oh, okay, maybe another. No, time. let's get this over with. Oh wow! So excited are you? All right, uh, it's. <laughs> I'm gonna put six minutes up on the clock, guys. I'm gonna need all the help I can possibly get in the chat. Uh, AJ's thinking of a PSVR game, and uh, you guys, the chat, and me, we have twenty yes or no questions to figure out what PSVR game that is in only six minutes. Ready? Go. Uh, yep. Does it have a uh, aim support? No. No aim. Uh, does it have move support? No. Okay, so we're thinking Dual Shock Four only, uh, unless it's just some kind of experience, something. Would you consider this a full fledged game? Yes. Okay. Is it horror? No. Not horror. It's number four. Can you man, uh, manipulate vehicles in any way? Uh, yes, you can manipulate vehicles in some way. Okay. Vehicles some way. Is it first person? Uh, it is first person. Okay. That would have narrowed it down significantly if it wasn't. Okay. Um, does it have puzzles? Uh, it does not have puzzles. No puzzles. Not horror, not puzzles. Uh, does it have full locomotion? It does have full locomotion. That was question number eight. Okay. Full loco. Hmm. Has this developer brought us other PSVR games? I don't think so, no. doesn't seem so. Okay. Um, uh, 
guys in the chat are not very helpful today. <laughs> Some sometimes they say random shit, but it ends up being right. It's so weird. <laughs> they they mostly like to just make this. I don't know. I see them help. They look like they're trying to be helpful right Somewhere. now. Oh yeah, old Darth is. Yeah. This is a good. One. I, I see. I see. Yeah, You're taking up all my time, buddy. I'm gonna need more time afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use the AJ trick. Uh, does it have any <laughs> multiplayer? It does not have multiplayer. Okay, so we're we're playing solo, guys. We're playing solo with full locomotion. It actually, first it actually says that it does, but I wouldn't count that. Okay. Uh, it, it says that it does, but not, but I don't know. I don't know how it would. <laughs> Twitcher says, "Could AJ sound any more bored by this format?" <laughs> uh, is uh, oh, old Darth again? Is it a rhythm game? It is not a rhythm game. Yeah, I guess with Dual Shock Four only, yeah, I guess it would probably wouldn't be rhythm. Uh, is it based on good? Good one, Justin Cassidy. Is it based on an IP? It is based on an IP. Here we go. Okay, this is the first real big clue we've been given. And you're on question number thirteen. All right, guys, we have to think of an IP that's Dual Shock Four only. Um, does this game have a flat screen version? Uh, uh, yes, this game has a flat screen version. All right, now, now, guys, this this is where you start putting all the great suggestions in here is think of flat screen games based on an existing IP. We have it in VR played with dual shock four in first person with full locomotion. It's a single player game listed apparently with some kind of multiplayer support. Um, no, Minecraft has multiplayer. Uh, ooh, LA Noir is interesting, but that has, that has move support. Uh, Trover is interesting because it has full locomotion. Trover's not a popular IP. That's a very good point. Um, yeah, is I mean, I hate I hate saying this. Is is it a is it a good game? Uh, I like it. <laughs> okay, That's true. I like it. I think you kind of like it. I think a lot of those who have played it kind of like it. I don't okay. think I've ever heard anyone say they hate it. Uh, is it like futuristic or sci-fi? It is futuristic and sci-fi. There we go. Nick, thank you very much for that question. That was right. number 15. So we got we only got a few questions left here, guys. So it's futuristic. Uh, it's based on an IP. Uh, there are flat, There's a flat screen version of it. It played in first person. I mean, so far, this could be... Right, so, so far, it could be Wipeout, right? Uh, full locomotion, first person. No, single player only, not wipeout. Single player only. Uh, Little Witch Academia. That's funny. Um, that, that does have multiplayer. A really big multiplayer. Sorry, sorry, excuse for multiplayer. Yeah, sorry, excuse, but it still has it. Um, Star Wars Squadrons uh, has multiplayer, obviously. Um, Gran Turismo has. Is it a car? No, hit. it's not futuristic. It, okay, it can't be. Can't be Gran Turismo. It's futuristic. What the hell is futuristic? Futuristic guys. It's got a flat screen version. Futuristic. Full locomotion. You probably you you probably have a physical edition of this game. Oh Jesus. That... Or the uh, the flat screen version of it. Was it a flat screen game that it got PS got PSVR patch later? Yes. Okay, guys, come on, come on, help me out here. Uh, 17. Not Res Infinite, because that launched as a PSVR title. Um, mm, not Gran Turismo. It's got to be futuristic, guys. Got a PSVR patch later. Futuristic. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, is it made by Konami? It is made by Konami. Is it Zone of the Enders? It is Zone of the Enders, Justin Cassidy with the last minute clutchness. Nice. Good it's, job, man. Justin Cassidy, I apologize for not having seen yours. I saw all you are's history. Uh, I've, oh, oh. I really apologize uh, for missing it. But whoa, Good thank save. you guys so much for saving me in the last five seconds. Holy Good crap. Good save. Five that seconds. Is wow. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. First person, full locomotion, single play area, uh, not puzzle, not horror. Dual shock. Only. I like this game, man. You like Zone of the Enders? I like Zone of the Enders. Yeah, for sure. 
for sure. Holy crap. Thank you guys for saving me. I almost didn't make it. All right, you guys, we're running a little bit long. I want to say thank you so very much for hanging out with us today and listening to our thoughts on uh, on After the Fall. Uh, we've got our fingers crossed uh, that Vertigo Games will deliver these patches. And of course, as those patches come through, we'll let you know all about them. We have total faith that they're going to they're gonna clean up this game uh, and that we'll get a good version on PSVR. Uh, for anyone who pre-ordered, for anyone who's playing on other platforms, have fun. Go out there, kill a bunch of uh, snow breed, and enjoy yourselves. Wild Hour, the game cat with the Australian two dollars says after the fall plus three hours sleep. What a nightmare! <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, Wild Hour, the one who clued us into the uh, early yes. access on of the Australian <laughs> store. Thank you so much for that, uh, guys. Thank appreciate you, everyone who helps this channel out. All the mods, uh, Sci-Fi Game Cat Henry, who does the timestamps. Everybody who helps us out, you know who you are. We thank you so so very much. Don't forget to subscribe to AJ over the PSVR Underground, uh, and don't forget to subscribe to Without Parole and hit that thumbs up. That's my homie right here. That's right. Uh, and that's it, guys. Uh, can can we cue the cat? Is that all right? Cue the cat, because there's snow breed coming, Brian. <laughs> Good snow breed, Jimmy. Jimmy, there's snow breed. Smash the snow breed, Jimmy. Shapeshifter VR. Have a great week, man. Rody the Game Cat, thank you so much. Mark the Pringles Leaf, thank you so much. Dan Kiefer. Zoe is a Kojima joint. <laughs> uh, it is definitely a awesome, an awesome PS2 game in VR. Uh, Brax Pro says, well, in case I don't see you later, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Good night to you too, sir. Vigello Boy 30 that Jimmy Gamer Cat says, have a happy Monday. You too. So much, man. He d donated $10. Thank you so much. Bit Thank you so boy. much. Wow. Keep, keep, keeping the lights on because obviously we ain't getting that Sony money. We ain't getting that Vertigo Games money. <laughs> <laughs> so we got your money, which is the best because then we get to stay true to you guys, the ones we care about first and foremost. Uh, yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope we get some good news on this game, man. I hope they update it. The game cap formerly known as I'm Dead to You X says meow. <laughs> Ash VR, the groovy game cat. J. Cray, wow, 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 wow. Uh, Twitch and single player game cat says play more dreams. I agree. <laughs> Go play uh, Jungle Bill 2, Hypercycle Arena 2, and uh, Pressure and Digital Chaos RPG. Nihilus Ride the Game v -Line. Keep staying metal, my friend. Savannah Lalelulilo -lo says Tarzan. <laughs> um, also, I like the Metal Gear reference. Mick it. Cole's yep. growing shapes as always. Jazzy J, the Terror Mage Game Cat. Peace out. Got told to you. Dog Flesh Eater Gaming. Yeah, buddy. Let's do this. Yeah. Guys, have a wonderful night. We will be back again soon. See you later. Meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow. One more meow. Meow. Very nice.